It's a nice wild edible. Japanese knotweed. And it grows quite prolific around here on the side of the river. It's been an invasive species, but it's good to eat. Just peel back the fibrous outer bark. It's got nice citrusy apple taste to it. Very similar to rhubarb. I mean the young pieces can be eaten straight away, they don't peel these. Even the bigger pieces in this time of year. All good to eat. So I'm going to collect a few of these, make some kind of rhubarb dish this time of year even the, the big stalks have got a lot of flavour they're very refreshing. Just peel back the thick fibrous stalks. Mm. Very nice. I didn't realise how much water was in each plant. Each of these stems is a bit like bamboo. Each section is quite self-contained. There's a fair bit of water in each one. It's a nice little drink actually. But I don't feel guilty about picking these because I say they're uh, they're non-native invasive species. They've been brought over from Japan. So we're doing a bit of a favour really picking these. The only downside is each of these can regrow, each section can regrow. So we've really got to dispose of all the leftover pieces. So each one's got ability to, to germinate from each each little cut section. The root's quite beneficial as well. It's supposed to uh, alleviate inflammation. You boil it seep it in water to make a, a tea yeah it's good for inflammation arthritis lots of different compounds in there for for health reasons health benefits there's also a lot of this plant around here garlic mustard jack by the hedge 
So I picked some of these new leaves. I'm going to make a soup later. Garlic and nettle potato soup. The foraging by rivers is a nice safe place. Not as much pollution. Not like Arabo farms where there's pesticides, fertiliser. Or again, side of the roads where there's a lot of exhaust fumes. Nice safe place and there's lots of, uh, lots of wild edibles around here. Garlic, mustard, nettles, Japanese knotweed, dandelions, chickweed, a lot around here. Yeah, it's good, good soil by the rivers, so there's lots of uh, wild plants that grow quite quickly. Yeah, so I'm going to have a look around, see what else I can find. Get some nettles for soup. Yeah, both dead nettles, the white dead nettles. Normal nettles make good soup, so I'm going to get some of these picked. Nice tender fresh leaves. We had a nice morning today, it's been good. Found a few wild edibles. Tested my new camera out. So I'm back at my wood now. It's a beautiful spot, beautiful day. All the wooden enemies are out at the best. A few bluebells out. A couple more weeks and they'll be the best. But the birds are singing lovely. You can hear them now. The blue tit using the nest box over there. Nuthatches singing, blackbirds, thrushes, blue tits, chiff chaff. The chaffinch. A lot of wrens singing. Yeah, it's a nice morning. Got still got a few wild edibles to pick. Got some wild garlic to collect. Some wood sorrel. I'm going to try and find some pig nuts. I know there's some in the wood. I'm going to try and collect some pig nuts. Get a fire going and make some soup. Yeah, I'm getting quite hungry now. <laughs> Just hairy bittercress. Just nice to add a bit of spice to your soup. Bit of garnish. All the plants edible. It just tastes like cress. A bit more, bit spicy than cress. It's nice. The young leaves are the best. Get a few more handfuls of that. Don't have to look far for wild garlic. It's everywhere. I'm just going to take some average sized leaves. And the flowers are starting to form, so I'm just going to take a few, a few flowers to give extra flavour. Wood sorrel is a nice snack, got a nice apple taste. You can eat the leaves and the flowers. The 
flowers are very similar to the wooden enemy. Obviously the wooden enemy is slightly bigger. The sorrel's got a slight pink tinge to it, but it's the leaves what give it away. The shamrock style leaves. Built a few of these last spring. These have been quite successful. Got a song thrush nest in that one and another nest in the other one over there. Yeah, quite pleased with these. I managed to find everything apart from pig nut. There's that many plants. It's grown so quickly I can't find it. There are a few clumps in the wood, but I don't want to break things down to find it, so I'll, I'll wait on later on in the year. I've got everything else. I'm going to fire going and get on with food. Make a soup and a pudding. <laughs> I'm doing a soup, boiling water, and I need a bit more wood than usual. So I've got some quite old oak, slightly punky, but it's dry. And some pine to get it going. Over the top of some birch bark. So it should be a nice, simple fire. <laughs> That's why you need plasters. People say plasters aren't necessary, but they are. Saves you. Get blood everywhere. <laughs> Nothing wrong with plasters. <laughs> uh, where was I?
off my cut to my finger, it's quite straightforward. Not the first time I've cut myself. I always keep plasters in my pouch. I'm going to boil the water for my soup. So what I've built into some of this, a simple tripod of pine root suspended from a, a wooden hook. Yeah, it's quite straightforward, quite easy. This way I like it. The pot hook's made by sticking two pieces of wood together with pine resin. Also finding a, a branch like this quite difficult. So it's just a case of sticking two together and the pine resin that's from a year or two back that and it's still lasting so you don't get too hot it should be fine that. So what I'm going to do for the soup is quickly chop some potatoes Add it to boiling water, some vegetable stock, get them nice and soft. And add the wild edibles, the garlic, the jack by the hedge. It's going to be a nice simple soup. i will also add some nettles as well. Vegetable stock just give it a bit of seasoning, a bit of salt. Let that go above the fire again. All I want is the potatoes to go soft. I can add the nettles and garlic. That's it, all done, quite simple really. When I pick them, I put them in, into this resealable bag. Keep them in there, keep them fresh. And add a bit of water to the bag. Yeah, quick rinse around. It, pull the water out. I think that's clean enough. Do the same with the nettles. So in there I've got wild garlic, jack by the hedge. Give it a bit of nice, nice flavouring. Nettles just to give it a bit of, bit of body. Like most greens, these kind of like do wilt in the pan. Nettles will give it some of that nice green colouring. I think that's done. Some bitter crest on for just some peppery taste. Oh, 
Oh, that's nice. <laughs> really nice. Not a strong garlicky taste, which is what we're after. Bitter crest is nice. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. Is that that peppery taste? I mean, you could put meat in if you want. I was going to put some vegetarian sausages in. I just didn't want to take away the flavour of the spring, spring plants. All I've done with these is peeled all the fibres off and chopped them. I've never cooked these before so I don't really know what I'm doing. But I'm going to put them in boiling water, some sugar, I've got some honey and cook them until they're soft, until they're giving out some of the sugars and say treat it a bit like rhubarb. Hopefully that'll work. One thing I thought I'd try is I filled this with water. I was wondering if I can boil water in it because it's I say it's like a self-contained little vessel. I don't know, it might burn. But you can do it with bamboo. So I wonder if you could yeah, boil water with this. I'll just put an oil so just to slowly roast, see what that tastes like. It's boiling. It's leaking a little bit in certain places. I think that's been quite successful though. I'll get it out and see what it's like. <laughs> well, it's definitely boiling, see it shaking. <laughs> yeah, it's boiled. Could make a cup of tea out of it, but it's boiled. Well, I boiled it. Maybe a bit too long. It's lost its shape, but it's there. Uh, bits I've had seem, seem very sweet. Bitter, but still sweet. I've drained the water off, made a bit of a nice sweet drink. I'll put a bit of wood sorrel on top, a bit of garnish, and again some more apple bitter taste to it. It just tastes just like rhubarb. Mm, it's nice with the wood sorrel as well, that. <laughs> Might just add a little bit of honey. I've got a very sweet tooth. A minute. That's a very nice wild edible that. I mean, it's, a, it's not a native species. There's a, no better way of getting rid of something, an evasive species, by, by eating it. 
that's nice. The liquor from the from steaming it. It's nice, sweet, sweet drink. Yeah, it's very nice. Sweet. The reason Japanese knotweed is so invasive is that it grows from the parts you, you break down to destroy it. So there's lots of these little pieces with shoots on can regenerate a new plant. So you take it away from the source you found it from. So it's best to uh, to burn it. I think get rid of it completely. Last thing we want is uh, this to grow in in the woodland. So I'll make sure this is all all destroyed. No touch call always gets a response. Well, this, this time of year, anyway. <laughs> yeah, the breeding season. You make that call, you always get a response from no touch. leave them in peace. I'm on my way home now so I won't disturb them anymore.